If you love the Mental Health Warriors podcast, then I have a couple ways for you where you can support the show. The first one is to do the simplest thing of all and, and tell somebody about it. If you want to share it, um, you know, on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, it doesn't matter. Just click the share button and let somebody else know about it. And the other one is if there's somebody in your life that you think would love the show and could benefit from the guests that we're talking about, tell them about it. Because the more people that know about it, the more people we can help. And that's what it's all about. The second thing you can do is go over to patreon.com slash mental health warriors and uh, support the show there. And it's not just your support. It's a value exchange. So for your support, you will get something in return. And uh, that would help us cover our costs and grow our audience. My, my uh, episode today is wonderful. It's with Josiah Novak. I freaking love this guy. He was in one of our mastermind groups last year. And the guy is so committed to not only his own personal development, uh, he's committed to helping people. And he is so friggin' fit. And he is a world class fitness coach. And this conversation was great because it shows that no matter where you're at, no matter how many failures you have, um, you can overcome them, you can learn from them, and you can keep soldiering on and you can take yourself to a higher and higher level. We thrive on adversity, whether it's physical adversity or mental or emotional adversity, because when we overcome it, we stand a little taller, we learn something about ourselves, and we have a better set of tools to move forward. So don't shy away from struggle. Embrace it. Embrace it as part of the human condition and part of your journey. Don't judge it as good or bad. Just learn and move forward. And Josiah's story is one that is full of overcoming obstacles from his childhood to his weight to ser very serious depression and then to growing a business and becoming a phenomenon. The guy is absolutely fit. He is, as I said before, a literally a world-class coach. Like when I watch what this guy is doing, uh, he is incredible. And we talk a lot about this episode. In this episode, we talk a lot about fitness and mental health and how those two things are related to each other. It's surprising to me how many guys ask me, hey, do you think there's a relationship between working out and like being fit and my, my mental and emotional health? Uh, yeah, probably. There probably is. You know, like 100% for sure, of course there is. You cannot be of healthy mind without being of healthy body and vice versa. The, the, we are a, one giant complicated system and everything works together. And Josiah gets into this in the podcast, but he's a huge believer in this. So um, let me tell you about Josiah. So he's a husband and dad who happens to have a passion for helping people achieve their ultimate life dreams through the power of health and fitness. He started the TrueTransformation.com project to help busy professionals and parents permanently change their health and fitness habits and routines. He hosts the Fit Man Project podcast, by the way, which I've been on, and he is an exceptional interview. Uh, you can find that on iTunes, and he has helped thousands through his True 8 Body Transformation program. He currently resides in Northern Virginia with his wife, Michelle, and their two young boys, Jackson and Cameron. Hey, my nephew's name is Jackson. You can learn more about Josiah's transformation program by visiting thetruetransformation.com slash January dash transformation. And we'll have that link in the show notes page. But listen, thanks, Josiah, for being on the podcast, man. And uh, thanks for inspiring me because uh, I love what you're doing. Your posts are articulate. They're to the point. They are super clear. There's no bullshit. And uh, your community is growing very quickly. And you're an amazing podcast host. And I can say that from personal experience. Uh, inspirational to me. So guys, enjoy the episode and we'll see you on the other side. Warriors are not born. Warriors are forged in the crucible of adversity. Warriors without fear are warriors without courage. We are men destroying stigma and stereotypes. We are a band of brothers because in brotherhood, there is strength. Our weapons are strength, empathy, and honesty. We are Mental Health Warriors, and this is our voice. Hey, Josiah, welcome to the Mental Health Warriors podcast. Jason, dude, we finally made this thing happen. Thanks so much for having me. We did. And I don't know if you noticed, we were just talking uh, before before I hit record. And I, I noticed as soon as I hit record, my voice drops an octave or two. And uh, that's just how it needs to be. 
Yeah, it's like your bedroom voice, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hello, Josiah. So, uh, so uh, yeah, I'm really excited. This is a podcast guest, man. I got I to gotta adopt that. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Oh, by the way, this podcast is not what you thought it was about. <laughs> So anyways, man, it's great to have you here. I know this is, we've been trying to set this up for a little while. So uh, why don't you, I mean, let's get started because you are super active in the, you know, health and fitness industry and you're, you're just building this incredible empire and inspiring people all over the world. But your backstory, uh, I think is really important because in the people I talk to, um, and, and the people in mental health warriors group and just, just dudes I talk to mostly around the, around the world. One of the questions I hear quite a bit is, and it blows my mind, but it's how, you know, is it, does it matter if I, if I work out, for example, or, you know, how much does food and nutrition have to do with mental health? And so a lot of times guys are struggling and they're, you know, but they're not doing some of the very fundamental things that, that they need to in order to, you know, create that whole, well fit human being that is more able to heal, I guess. So, but you're, you know, you've gotten to this point where you are, uh, helping people, just so many people, but man, it's your backstory. Uh, you've come from a pretty tough place at point at some at different times in your life. So maybe we could start at the beginning and just tell us, you know, where you, a little bit about where you came from, uh, your, your background, some of the struggles you faced and, uh, you know, just stuff like that. Yeah, absolutely. I, uh, I always tell people health and fitness was a life savior uh, in many different aspects, both mentally and physically for me. Um, growing up, I was a pretty active kid, but I was in a very uh, unhealthy family situation where I was a, a victim of, of abuse as a kid, um, and both physically and mentally from, from my parents, but specifically my father. Um, it was kind of an interesting dynamic. My dad was uh, a big military guy. Uh, big into health and fitness, big into taking care of himself. And of course, just like every other young boy, <clears throat> I wanted to be just like my dad, right? A initially. And I patterned my, you know, my routine as a young boy with running and, and doing push ups and sit ups after my dad. But after going through quite a few years of getting pushed around and just being verbally attacked and abused and, and physically pushed around and abused, I, I kind of made a, 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 a line in the sand, if you will. I said, you know, I, I, I want to, you know, strengthen myself to literally be able to defend myself. Right. Um, and I started going to the gym with one goal in mind, and that was to, you know, get strong enough to be able to kick my dad's ass basically. And, you know, you know, coupled with that, you know, I struggled in the social environment, right? I, I think a lot of it had to do with the environment that I had at home where it was a lot of yelling and screaming. And, um, you know, we didn't have a lot of money growing up. My, I'm one of six kids. Uh, we lived in a very small house. I, I always shared a room growing up. Um, never knew any different really until I was about 18 or 17 years old. I, I would say when I finally got my own room for about a year <laughs> and, uh, you know, so we were a one income family coupled with, you know, the, the, the pretty nasty environment. And I struggled socially because I felt like all my friends had something that I didn't have. And that was just peace, love, understanding, and all the things that I witnessed their parents doing for them, uh, coupled with the materialistic stuff that they would always get because it seemed like everybody else always had more money than us. And so mm -hmm. I, I struggled both at home and out in the world. And I said, you know, where can I start to develop some confidence? Now, I didn't say that as a kid, you know, I didn't, go to the gym and walk in there and go, all right, I'm going to start building my self-esteem. I, I just said, man, this looks cool. You know, I, I was naturally um, attracted to the idea of getting stronger, bigger, faster. And, you know, obviously it would help with sports because I played sports growing up. And I said, you know, I'm just going to start going to the gym every day. That's going to be like my after practice, after school activity. And I'm going to get bigger. I'm going to get stronger. And I remember it was like a defining moment. I think I was going into my junior year in high school and uh, a buddy of mine who was about a year older than me, I say buddy of mine, he, he wasn't really a friend because he, he, he told me, he's like, look, man, you know, <clears throat> you're moving up in, in, you know, into varsity sports and you need to be bigger because everybody is bigger than you. Right. And mm -hmm. coupled with the idea that, man, my dad is, you know, pushing me around and kicking my ass and then everybody at school's stronger and bigger than me. I got to start doing this thing, man. So that was kind of how I got into the fitness uh, groove. I quickly fell in love with it. Um, my parents split when I was 
13 and I spent some time with my dad and mom and kind of back and forth. And eventually it was just my mom once I was about 16 years old. But uh, fitness was kind of the cornerstone and it was my place of refuge, man. I mean, I would go there and just feel alive. Uh, and that was how it all started. Um, there was, you know, there's been many steps on the journey, but you know, that's what got me into it and, and really helped me fall in love with the idea of just taking care of myself, bettering myself and having the power to do so built my confidence, man. My body started to change. Um, I started to get compliments from girls, which is always nice. Uh, Absolutely. And, you know, my dad, I remember making comments about me like, man, your, your arms are getting bigger. And I would, you know, we, we didn't spend a lot of time together after I was about 16. And, you know, I remember the, the small times that we did have where we would have some, some fights and whatnot. It never got physical again. I think it was just because my dad started to realize that, wow, this, this kid's no longer just a little kid that I can push around and, and that kind of stuff. But yeah, man, I mean, it's been quite a journey, um, but that was really how it all kicked off. Well, so do you remember – one thing I'm always interested in is when, when we grow up in an environment and it's sort of the only thing that we know – there's there's a, typically a moment, I guess, when, you know, as a as a young person, you step back and you realize that uh, this isn't normal and this isn't what I see that my friends are going through. Do you remember the sort of some of the moments or, that you had when you realized that your home life was different than than maybe some of the people you hung around with or went to school with? Oh, every time there was a holiday or birthday or anything of that nature where there was a celebration and I saw people come together and be happy and, and uh, just feel really just genuine, right. About the emotion that they were experiencing. I, I felt different. It just felt different than what I was accustomed to. Uh, I think a lot of it, you know, and I hate to talk about money as being a big deal, but I feel like a lot of it had to do with just this idea that, and maybe it was due to the fact that my parents were constantly reminding us that we didn't have any money. You know, it was like, no, we can't mm -hmm. do that. We don't have any money. No. And there was a fight, you know, between my parents or I, I witnessed my parents arguing about Christmas gifts. And, you know, it was just a na nasty kind of uh, emotional swing that I would always go through. And so whenever I would be a part of a friend's you know, celebration, whether it was a holiday or event or party or whatever it might have been, I, I just noticed that everybody seemed to really just love each other. It had nothing to do with materialistic stuff, at, I guess, at, at certain points, but it was really just this whole thing of, wow, you know, these people are healthy and happy and something is just different, man. It just felt, it felt different. Yeah, that's interesting. You know, another thing I'm, I'm interested in too is that we take what we learn or we take our experiences and we carry them into our relationships going forward. So if I look at myself, for example, like, you know, I had a, I was very fortunate. I had a very stable home. I mean, there wasn't a lot of, uh, I would say love expressed. And I always feel like my, I know my mom listens to these podcasts. I love you. You guys were great parents. So, <laughs> you know, I, I, I've said that 15 times so far, but, but regardless, there wasn't a lot of emotional uh, because of their backgrounds. I don't fault them for it at all, but there wasn't a lot of emotional expressions of love or physical touch or anything like that, but it was very stable. And, you know, I never really worried about them breaking up or, or divorcing or anything like that. I never, and my dad was, they, they were, they were also very active involved parents, which was great. But so I took this idea of what it meant to be a man, which was, you know, from what I learned from my dad, which was, you know, logical and not very emotional and all that. And I really took that into my relationships uh, because it was the only thing I really knew. And that caused me some issues, I would say. I mean, I've been really open about all that kind of stuff. But um, and it took me a long time to, I don't want to say overcome it, but just learn that there was another alternative, you know, where you could be more open and, and vulnerable and authentic and all that kind of stuff. So with your background and the things that you experienced, I mean, did you carry that into your relationships as a young man and even, even you know, into your, I guess, young adulthood or whatever? And how, how did you or how have you, you know, sort of worked to overcome that and create something different? That's a great question. Yeah, I definitely did. Uh, early on, you know, in, in early relationships where I was just kind of venturing into the uh, dating world, uh, I was very unhealthy, uh, mostly on my, my part. You know, I was quick to anger, quick to, you know, jealousy, uh, very insecure. I think a lot of that was from those early days of just feeling uh, different, right? Feeling like I was different in a bad way, <laughs> you know? Yeah, um, yeah. And I think that it took me a long time and a lot of you know self reflection i also think just growing outside of relationships whether it was career or uh, personal development and just learning and falling in love with building a business or a passion um i think gave me more confidence when it came to relationships but you know it was it's been interesting because now that i'm a father 
and I've uh, been married for a few years. I uh, I still struggle, and and I say struggle, but you know I think we all struggle with different things. I I think for me, my struggles now are around just continuing to you know check myself uh, and make sure that I'm not happy with progress and I'm not you know settling for being just good enough. Um, and always just trying to make sure that you know I'm, I'm reflecting on is my behavior uh, better than I you know than I want it to be? Is it is it worse than I want it to be? Is it still you know, venturing back to those old days and those old habits of chaos and yelling and screaming. And I would say, you know, my family now is way different than uh, it was growing up. Right. And so we've made a lot of progress and things are great, but there are still moments where, you know, I, I think one of the big things that I've noticed about myself is that, you know, growing up, there was always yelling. There was always screaming. I mean, it's six kids, you know, two adults who didn't love each other, you know, physical right. abuse. I mean, it was like a zoo, right? And so for me, I developed this desire to just be alone, right? And, you know, kind of get into seclusion and uh, move away from the chaos and the noise and all this stuff and just find quiet time and peace. And that was one of the reasons why I went to the gym all the time. And so, you know, now that I have a family who loves me and truly wants me around and all this stuff, I do find that at times, you know, I have to remind myself that I shouldn't just isolate myself all the time. I shouldn't, you know, go into seclusion or go to the gym too much Mm -hmm. and, you know, hide away from, you know, things that need to be addressed. I think it's important to spend time with the people that you love. Uh, And it's just, you know, a habit that I have, I've had to work on. And so, yeah, man, I mean, it does leak into your future relationships for sure. Um, it's something that it's just about, you know, for me, it's been about self-awareness and really just making sure I have these checkpoints and these, these things that I'm addressing, um, you know, all the time. Isn't it funny how sometimes what I, what I struggle with, I think is trying to balance like all the fucking navel gazing I do with, with just accepting me for who I actually am, you know? So I'm always looking at this. It's funny. I had this podcast, actually the the last one I released last week, and it was about this, this guy who wrote a book called Driven. And what he, he's a, uh, anthropologist, geneticist, psychologist, like, and it's it, this whole idea that, that there's about 10% of the population that is genetically wired to be different, right? To be driven, to be, and some of these characteristics of people, you might hear echoes of yourself and what I'm about to say, but you know, it's like nothing is ever good enough that the grass is always greener on the other side. Like you look at these people's resumes and they jump from job to job to job. They, when they're focused on something, they go completely down the rabbit hole, but oftentimes they can, you know, a lot of times they're labeled as OCD, ADD, you know, sometimes they, they have addictions, you know, and, but they, they can have spectacular success successes and spectacular flame outs. And, you know, like, and I was listening, I read the book and I was having this podcast and I was like, oh my God, man, this, <laughs> you are describing me to a T. But what he was saying was that there's also so much shame in, in, in these people because they don't fit in and they feel like there's something wrong with them and they don't understand themselves and accepting who you are and then working within you know, accepting that you are wired this way and then putting structure around your life to maximize your ability to, you know, uh, or maximize your capabilities, I guess, is is really important. And so I'm thinking about that. And I, I think I wonder how much time I should spend thinking about how to improve versus just accepting this is a part of who I am. And like, so for an example, for example, I like to work out alone. Like, I hate working out with other people. I don't even know why. You know, and sometimes I wonder about that. Like, basically, was I, am I isolating myself? And I get all, like, reflective about it. And But sometimes I think, oh, shut the fuck up, man, and just accept yourself for who you are. I like working out alone. So what? Why am I, why do I keep judging it? Why do I keep trying to see if this is a problem? You know what I mean? Totally, man. Yeah, no, I struggle with the same things. It's funny you bring those things up. Everything you just mentioned are, are things that, uh, you know, whether I struggle with it now or have it at some point. Uh, and it's all char- characteristics of somebody who is driven for sure. And I think that accepting myself for who I am, um, you know, it's it, there's been moments where, you know, for example, like I, I brought up the, the whole isolation thing and just liking to be alone. Um, that's healthy in a lot of ways, right? I mean, for me, I have to have that time. You know, I need to separate myself uh, from my kids and my wife, and it sounds terrible, but you know, I, I do it just for, for periods of time, uh, not long periods of time. It might just be an hour here and there or, or whatever. And so it's, it's just so that I can fully engage and be, you know, the, the guy that I want to be and the man I want to be for the people that love me and need me. Right. And so, you know, instead of beating myself up and being like, Oh man, why, why am I such a weirdo? You know, like, why do I need mm-hmm. 
an hour in the gym by myself or why do I need to go read a book, uh, you know, while, while, I, while I'm on the toilet or whatever by myself for <laughs> you know, an hour? Um, you know, it's just because it's who you are, right? I mean, and you're right. You have to you – know, there, there is moments where you need to go, okay, I need to improve certain things about myself and I need to work on it. But at some point, I do need to just say, dude, this is just me, man. Like, <laughs> fucking hate it or yeah. love it. Like, this is me, you know? Yeah, for sure. So I know – I've seen you post online uh, some pictures at various point at some point in your life when you were pretty uh, quite large, let's say, uh, not fit, but uh, quite large. So you started working out in, as a young man, and you you know started to notice these changes. But what happened at that phase? You, I, I don't know how old you actually were in that picture, but at some point you obviously kind of went off the rails a little bit and gained a whole bunch of weight before you tra- you know transitioned to the guy you are today. So what happened during that point in your life? Yeah, so the journey started when I was, uh, you know, the, the, in high school working out and everything, and then I transitioned uh, into college where I played sports for a couple of years, and then uh, when I was done playing sports, I was kind of left with a lot of free time, um, you know, just going to class, partying and stuff, and there was something missing. I, you know, biggest thing for me was I didn't really have a job, right? My job had always been, you know, odd in, odd in jobs, you know, mowing lawns and working, you know, as I think I was a waiter in high school for about a year, uh, and I realized, man, now I need to go and find a job because I'm not playing sports. You know, there's like an extra four or five hours a day of my life uh, that is that is open. Coupled with that, I was really starting to hit a wall when it came to addressing the emotional and mental issues that I had from my upbringing, right? And so I felt very lost uh, going into my second year of college. I felt just kind of like everybody had it all together, right? Except for me, you know, it was once again, that insecurity, I looked around and a lot of my friends were, you know, they're, they're going to become lawyers, or they're going to become doctors, or some of my friends were excellent athletes, and they were getting, you know, ready to move to the professional level. And so I was just kind of in this zone of man, what in the fuck am I going to do with my life? Right? Like, Mm -hmm. I'm in school, first of all, I I'm not someone who can sit in class for hours at a time. I, you know, I'm very hyperactive. Um, I, I have a hard time sitting down and listening to someone, especially if it's on a topic that I could give two shits about. Right. And so I'm just trying to do the college thing because that's what everybody else is doing. But I really was lost when sports went away. And so, of course, I love to work out. But when I was done playing sports, I realized that and I, now looking back, I guess I, I hindsight is 2020, but my activity went from pretty high to very low. Right. And so I started uh, filling that time with, you know, jobs here and there and then partying, drinking, eating. And when I was done with college, my eating habits and my drinking habits and my recreational drug habits were just terrible. Um, and so I slowly over the years started to gain weight. Now, it wasn't noticeable, you know, at first. I didn't wake up one day, like two days later and go, oh, my God, I've gained 100 pounds. What the hell just happened? You know, but it was more of like a steady gain. You know, every year it was 10 pounds, 15 pounds. And then when I was I moved up to uh, Washington, D.C. after college. And I was working as a personal trainer and then I got out of that when I realized I, I couldn't do that corporate personal trainer life and I moved mm. into starting my own uh, financial planning business because it was once again money, right? I wanted to learn about money. I wanted to you know, finally get my hands around what it meant to be wealthy and all that stuff and help other people do the same thing while I was learning. And I opened my own practice, but it fucking bombed, dude. Like <laughs> 2008, 2009 hit right when I was starting. And as a 20, I think I was what, 21, 22 year old kid. Uh, and I had no Rolodex. I had no contacts. I had no trust from people who had money. I was just trying to sell life insurance and small investments here and there to, to make a living. And I, I quickly went broke, uh, lost uh, a house that I had invested in. Um, I lost, um, my car. I I lost a lot of things because I couldn't pay for them. Right. And so all of this was like a perfect storm and coupled with not addressing my emotional baggage, my mental baggage, where I felt like the world hated me. I felt like I had been dealt a bad hand and I hadn't really learned how to couple my love for hitting the gym with a love for eating right, you know, and a love for, Mm -hmm. you know, sleeping right and, and taking care of myself. And dude, I woke up in 2000, man, it was 2007, 2008, somewhere in that range. And I was 80 pounds overweight. I was 80 pounds heavier than when I had gone to school in 2003, right? So when I graduated high school in 2003 and gone to college, I was about 200 pounds. And I woke up 
And now 200 pounds back then, I was a pretty big guy um, because I played sports and I was just a bigger guy. But I woke up at 280 pounds uh, about seven or eight years later. And I looked in the mirror, dude, and I was like, what the fuck? Like, I was so ashamed. And I I don't know how – I guess it was in my mind. I was like, how did this happen, right? Like, Oh, I can relate to this so much, man. (laughs) You know, I'm like, wait a second. I thought – wait, I thought I could eat a whole pizza – when I was pissed off and be okay, but I guess I can't, you know? And so like I was depressed, man. I I was, I I really went into a dark place for about a year uh, where I was sending out messages to, to close friends and family that I wanted to end my life. And I was serious about it. Right. And I, I kept, I kept making like just enough money to survive with jobs, you know, as I was trying to get my career back on track um, and I was just kind of surviving. And then I have like a, you know, a big hit, like, oh man, I, you got to pay this bill that you've been neglecting and boom. And then I'd be like, oh man, I fucking, I hate myself and I just want to kill myself and I'm fucking fat and I feel like shit and no girls are into me anymore. And what happened to me? And like, it was bad dude. And it, it was really, really tough. And so, yeah, man, I mean, that was kind of the lowest of the low. Um, and that was really a, a turning point for sure. It's amazing. <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm certainly not laughing at the depression part of it, but I, the way that we can convince ourselves about or, or delude ourselves or rationalize our behavior or choose what you know how to see things is both. It can be both a, an incredibly powerful thing, but an incredibly uh, detrimental thing as well. I remember when I was. I think I was in my second year of college too. I think I was in my second year of college for the second time, actually. Uh, that's needless to say, I was no <laughs> rocket scientist. But I, I gained, so I was lifting weights and I don't know, I really f- styled myself, like I fancy myself as a power lifter. I mean, fuck, I was nothing of the sort, but I really thought I was a power lifter. And I, I mean, I would go to McDonald's and I would eat, I remember this, this is one of my most epic meals of all time, actually, but it was a, the, I don't, McDonald's used to sell pizza way back in the day, and I remember getting a pep, a pizza, a super size fry, and a and four cheeseburgers. Like that was lunch. So I was I got up to I'm like five eight five nine. So I got up to about two hundred and seventeen pounds. I think was my heaviest, and I was doing this job, and I was like, I am fucking huge. Like they're like I'm basically <laughs> like a human a human bull. You know, that's what I was telling myself. And then I, and I, but I was wearing like a, like the 38 inch waist pair of pants was like tight, you know? And so I, I uh, like quite tight. And so I was doing a job painting for the summer. And I remember, uh, the people were at home and I was walking, I had my shirt off and I was walking through their house to go to the backyard. And I walked by the bathroom and th- there was a mirror in the bathroom and I walked by and I caught a glimpse of myself and I actually did this thing where I stopped. I actually walked backwards to go back in front of the mirror and I was, I looked at myself and I took my gut and I like swiveled my hips and my gut kept moving for a significant period of time after I stopped moving my hip, my hips. And I was like, holy fuck, I am fat as fuck right now. Like how did, and I didn't even realize it until that moment. And I was like, holy shit, how did this happen? What am I doing? What, like, oh, it was brutal, man. But up until that very moment, I thought I was like, I just thought I was huge, like powerful. And you know what I mean? Oh, it's sure. bizarre. So I, yeah, I'm sure I, I think a lot of people, I just, I guess the point is that our, it's almost like a teeter totter in the sense that our choices have this way of they all seem so small and they all seem so insignificant in that moment. Oh, it's just a pizza, man, or it's just a this or just a that. But it's like you walk your way. Each each decision is a step up the teeter totter, and all of a sudden the teeter totter. You get to the middle and it flips over. You know what I mean? And uh, oh yeah, so I can I can totally relate and I can totally empathize with people who are still in the grips. I'm sure you see this all the time that are playing these mind games with themselves. Right. So, um, okay. So you have that moment and then how, where does the journey go from there? Because you somehow ended up from where you were at that point to this, uh, this incredibly fit dude. So what did that journey look like? Yeah. So I'm sitting there, you know, 80 pounds overweight, wondering what the hell I'm going to do with my life and if it's even worth living. And so I, a couple of things happened actually. So I, I, you know, I, I was on the internet and, uh, there was a guy named, uh, Greg Plitt, 
and he's actually passed away. He he passed away a few years ago um, in a freak accident, but he was this incredibly fit guy. And I don't know how I necessarily stumbled a, upon him. I I was on the computer a lot, just kind of surfing and wasting time trying to you know apply for different jobs and just fucking browsing dumb shit to keep my mind you know occupied. And so. I stumbled upon his website and I started watching some of the free videos that he had put out and it was, you know, he was in incredible shape. I mean, this guy was a specimen, you know, just ripped and full of energy and just, man, it was inspiring. And I started to really just get into the mental side of the stuff that he was talking about because he really didn't put out a lot of workout and nutrition stuff. It was more like, Hey dude, this is how you need to to act as a man, right? This is the, the mental side of the game. And this is the things you can accomplish. And, you know, his story was full of success. You know, he didn't really have too many ups and downs, it seemed like, but just the things he was talking about just were hitting home for me in a big way. And so I, uh, I started to venture back into, uh, somewhat of a routine. It wasn't, it wasn't like, Oh, I went back to the gym and I was just like Rocky or anything like that. It was just like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to get up, you know, and I don't have much to do on a Saturday morning. So I'm going to go do 30 minutes of cardio. Right. And I started to go back to the gym where I had been a personal trainer when I had first moved up to Washington, DC. And I bumped into, you know, people I had known back when I was a trainer and some of the comments they made were, you know, like the nice way of telling me I was fat as shit. They were like, <laughs> oh man, you know, you've been bulking, huh? You've been packing on some size, you know, you, 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 you've trying been to, bulking. Yeah. Trying to do bodybuilding <laughs> or something. You know, like, <laughs> and I'm thinking to myself, dude, if you only knew, man, like I, it took me just a, an act of God for me to be here right now. So, you know, anyway, so I'm, I'm, I'm there and I'm starting to realize that people had looked at me as somebody who was a fitness person, right? Somebody who was a workout guy. And I, tr- truth, truth be told, I had always loved a couple of things. I'd always loved working out. I'd always loved helping people, right? It made me feel like I was meant to do something here. I, I knew in my mind as a kid, it was kind of weird. I, I I always knew I was meant to do something great, right? It was like this feeling of man, like, and for a long time, I thought I was going to be a pro athlete. Like I thought that was going to be my, my ticket out of, uh, you know, the, the turmoil that I was in as a child. And then when that didn't happen, I thought I was maybe going to be a lawyer. Uh, and then when that didn't happen, I thought, well, maybe I'll be like the wolf of fucking wall street, you know, and I'll just sell, you know, financial, uh, plans that make people millions of dollars and I'll be successful. And then that obviously didn't work out. And I, but all through my entire life, once I had started training, fitness had been my rock. It had been something that I always loved to do. And it gave me this just incredible feeling. And then when I started to preach to other people, the benefits of working out and coach them and show them as a trainer, it was just another level to that high. And so as I'm sitting there, you know, getting back into a routine, I'm seeing this guy named Greg, who's just killing it. And, you know, I'm like, man, I, I want to fucking do that. I want to be Greg Plitt, right? I want to be the guy that changes his life, right? Puts puts everything, you know, that's negative to the side and, and focuses on getting where I need to be. I want to stop being a little bitch, right? And I need to get my life back together. So I, uh, and I also realized, man, I have the ability to influence others because there's people telling me, man, like what happened, dude? Like what? You're the guy like, man, like I, you know, you were a trainer, like what the hell's going on? You know? And so I started just to slowly get back into it. Now, you know, I'm not going to lie to people listening and say it was like a overnight, you know, thing Mm -hmm. here. This took many years. I mean, it's, it's been 11 years or so since that whole year went by. So it's been over a decade. Um, but what ended up happening was it was just, you know, uh, first of all, realizing that I needed to change, right? Like realizing that, okay, if I'm not going to kill myself, if I'm, <laughs> you know, if I'm uh, to be mm-hmm. frank with you, I wasn't probably brave enough to take my own life, even though I felt like I wanted to, but I, I said, okay, you know, there's people out there that I can impact. You know, I have a family, uh, siblings that, you know, my younger brother uh, looked up to me in a big way, still does. We're still, I mean, we're best friends now. And so leaving him behind would have been absolutely selfish. And I have mentors now, even if they don't know me, man, I'm fucking watching your videos, Greg. Like, <laughs> you know, like mm-hmm. I'm, you're coaching me, man, whether you know it or not, you're coaching me. And so I started to invest in him. I, I purchased uh, his like mentorship program and I started to really fall in love with this whole idea of transforming my body. And that was the catalyst for transforming every other part of my life. And so once I started to really get in better shape, I got a better job. You know, I started to make better money. Um, and God bless it. It was, it was a marketing gig. It was a sales gig. Uh, and I started to learn the art of marketing and, and 
building a business and selling the business and selling the products and customer service and what I didn't realize at the time, but it laid the, the groundwork for the business that I have now. Uh, and so, yeah, man, I mean, over the course of probably, you know, I did, I, I had my ups and downs, you know, I, I did a bodybuilding show to kind of motivate myself, um, to get in incredible shape. That was somewhat of a mistake and we can get into that if you want, but it was, you know, I did that and then I got a couple modeling contracts, which, you know, never thought that would happen. So I got to be in a couple magazines for fun and that was cool. And then I just started to build my online coaching business slowly and surely I opened the doors in 2014, excuse me. And I, um, you know, can have continued to build it ever since, but yeah, man, I mean, the journey has been, uh, quite a a difficult one, but just an incredible one, man. But that was, that was kind of where things turned around and how they turned around. Um, and then, you know, I can talk about more, uh, you know, that's, that's gone on since then, but that's, that was really it, man. That's a great story. Yeah, well, I definitely want to hear the bodybuilding story. But before that, I, I think one of the things that you said that's important that a lot of people don't realize is when we when we want to change, you know, or we want to we, we have this feeling that maybe we want to change something or we want to profoundly change our life. You know, we don't like where we're at. We always people always look at the end, this utopian end state and think you know, and all of a sudden, like they just build this mountain right in front of themselves. Like they look at this utopian end state, and then they compare it to how far away they are from that state, and they're like, "Fuck, forget it, man." You know, like it's uh, it's just too much work. And I think one thing you said is really important is that that it was a multi year, and I mean, obviously, it, it's a lifetime journey. But that you started with you know something as simple as going to the gym and doing a half an hour of cardio, and. I guess my question is, did you, were there times, I'm sure there were, but times during the initial parts of that journey where that those old thought patterns and ways of thinking were like a boat anchor around your neck that you felt like you were dragging along with you? Or was it like, how did your thinking evolve, I guess, as your, you slowly started to make those changes in your body? Yeah, I think initially, you know, there was this, this big push to build a lot of momentum, right? And so I mm-hmm. put a lot of things to the side. Uh, that were important things, you know, initially, you know, I, I lost some relationships, I lost uh, some opportunities in, in business and career, because I was so focused on, you know, obtaining this, this body transformation, you know, because that was like the one thing I, I felt like I could control, you know, I, I couldn't mm-hmm. control whether I made a ton of money, I couldn't control whether I, you know, at least I didn't think so at the time, I couldn't control, you know, what people thought of me, I just said, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to change my body, no matter what it takes. And so I think initially, you know, I put a lot of effort into it and I was a little bit too extreme. And then what ended up happening was I I burnt out, you know, for periods of time during this journey where, you know, I would lose a bunch of weight and then I, and my habits and my routines, I just couldn't keep up with them because they were just way too, you know, unbalanced. And I, and I don't, I don't want to sit here and say that balance is even something people should shoot for. I just think that being aware of what's important is really, really valuable. And so I, I kind of didn't have that for periods of time. And so I would lose, you know, 40, 50, 60 pounds and then I'd gain back 10, 15 and I'd think to myself, man, what the hell? Like this is, I'm never going to master this shit. You know, I'm never going to become a, a Jedi of, you know, fitness. I'm, I'm all these guys who are, I'm, I'm seeing with success and the body and everything. They're just, you know, they're on something, right? They're, they're taking drugs. They're, they're cheating the system. They were born that way you know, they have good luck. I have bad luck. And so there were moments and definitely, and I say moments, but some of these moments lasted, you know, six months where I would be like, dude, fuck this. Like I, you know, I can't do this at the level that I thought I could. And I would lose momentum, but then something would spark, whether it was, oh, maybe there's a new client that wants me to help them. Or maybe uh, I saw a change in a performance indicator that I had in the gym, or maybe I'm doing better in other parts of my life. And so, man, I need to keep going with this fitness thing. Uh, But yeah, dude, that, that whole like, utopia in state and thinking, man, if I could just, you know, get to this point, you know, I'll be great, but damn, that's going to take, you know, 20 years or whatever. Uh, instead of just living and saying, wow, what a great moment I'm in right now and being thankful for it and feeling gratitude for just the ability to go after that state that you, that you dream about is, is a big deal, man. So yeah, there were definitely, definitely that, that whole, like going back to the old way and, just having to, I mean, really just dig my way out of it. You know what I mean? It wasn't like mm-hmm. this fucking snap my fingers and watch Tony Robbins and I'm going to be like back to, you know, on fire. It was like, fuck, man, this might take four months of me kicking myself and being like, ah, I can't get back into it. But then I did, you know, and it, the journey continued. 
Yeah, and that's a really important lesson for people because life that that kind of thing that I you know lurching forward, you know, and taking a few steps forward and taking a step back or having great success and making a mistake like that never really stops. And so instead of looking at it, I think what people do is they look at it like they they look at events that happen and instead of being you know working hard to look at them as nothing more than events that happen, they look at them they they put all these judgments all over them. It's good. It's bad. It's all these things. And I I, I always say. Like this is a pretty recent thing, but like there are no that I've been thinking about, but like there are no good or bad days. There are only days. Everything else is meaning that we ascribe to them, right? And when we when we take an event like a say a quote setback, if you put all this judgment and meaning all around it, well, what you look at it is as like another fucking example of how you failed you know, on this journey of life. And when you're in that fucking headspace, you are not able to learn the lessons from it, where if you step back and you go, okay, this is just something that happened. You know, what can I learn from it? What incremental improvement can I make as a result of this thing that happened? How can I, in just some small way, continue to optimize my performance in this specific area? Um, then when you're operating from that headspace, first of all, it's much more realistic. But second of all, you know, you're, you're able to step back and learn the lessons because we all continually fuck up. Like we all make these or not even we are we make these choices that don't create what we want. You know, so what do you do with that? There's a couple different ways to go. So I love. Um, yeah, I think it's just a really important lesson that is well beyond fitness. It's just a lesson for life. So I'm glad that you shared that because I really want the audience to take that away. But back to the bodybuilding competition, because I don't want to forget that story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I mean, just a lesson learned, right? I mean, when I when I was going through the whole fitness transformation and really just getting things in place that would last me a lifetime as far as the lessons that I learned, you know, initially I made a couple mistakes and one of which was definitely jumping into an extreme approach, right? I, I think as, as a person, I have the tendency to uh, go all in, right? When, it, when I'm passionate about something. And so I thought to myself, like, what can I really do to, you know, set a goal that's going to push me and take me so far out of my comfort zone uh, and, and also give me the result that I'm looking for, which was like the ultimate body at the time. And I thought, you know, looking around and back then we didn't, Facebook was really just kind of getting, you know, going, I didn't, we didn't have Instagram, we didn't have Snapchat. And so like, there weren't all these fitness people out there. I mean, they were out there, but nobody knew of them. The only people I knew were the guys in the magazines. Right. So, mm -hmm. and most of the guys in the magazines were bodybuilders, like high level competitive fucking juice to the gr gills you know, through, you know, 250 pounds shredded. And I'm like, Oh my God. Like that's, you know, I gotta, I gotta jump into a bodybuilding show. If I'm going to look presentable, if I'm going to look like a guy who works out. And so I did, and I actually hired a, a couple of coaches who will remain nameless because they were the worst coaches on earth, but <laughs> they gave me like, you know, a, a bird food diet where it was like water and grass and, you know, some chicken. Mm -hmm. And, uh, being so focused on obtaining a goal for once in my life, I was like, okay, I'm going to follow this thing and I'm going to get on stage. And what ended up happening was I fucked up my metabolism for a good chunk of time where I was eating, you know, man, probably, and I'm a bigger guy remembered. And so I, I jumped on stage at about 195, uh, 195 pounds shredded my first show. And I was, you know, man, probably eating 1200 calories a day. Wow. Um, for like three months and doing cardio and lifting and being a miserable piece of shit because when you're that low in calorie and you're doing that kind of activity, I mean, you're just so grumpy. And so I, uh, I did that just for a chunk of time to try to get to this level, just trying to learn the game, right? Like trying to, you know, I'd, I'd been a trainer, I'd taken the courses, I'd known all this stuff and, but I needed to master this stuff. And I thought that was the answer, but <laughs> I messed up my metabolism. So what ended up happening after the show was of course I went crazy and I started eating, you know, man, like I was searching high and low for like the best foods and I packed on like 25 pounds in a week, dude. Um, and I realized, man, like this is not, this is not going to work. You know, if I want to keep this weight off, if I want to be lean and, and jacked and all this stuff 24 seven, that's not, that's not how you do it. And so it was, it was brutal, man. I mean, I had fun. I actually won my class in bodybuilding, but wow. I, I, I came away with a, a horrible metabolic issue that I had to correct. And it took a while. It took honestly about 18 months of diligent, uh, reversed, reverse dieting slash just getting back into a healthy routine, uh, to really just get my metabolism back to working properly. But yeah, dude, it was, it was fun, but it was also brutally, uh, brutal. <laughs> 
Wow, that is that is crazy. Yeah, I I have that tendency too. You know, like when I when I want to make some change, I just get super extreme about it, and it never for me it never works out. Like it, I just like there's like I agree with you when you say there's no such thing as balance. But I need to take I need to learn to take a more moderate, sustainable approach. But what I I often find myself doing like okay, that's it, no carbs. That's it. There's no fucking carbs from here on in. I gained three pounds. This is actually what I I still do sometimes. Like uh, I am so. Like what I do, and this is not, I'm not advocating this at all, but I look at my physical body, not, it has nothing to do, it probably does to a certain extent, but I I really believe it has very little to do to how I project myself to other people, but I use it as a barometer of how much I have my shit together, right? That's Mm. like, because it's, if I got my, you know, the routine's going right, I mean, right, like then obviously my body will follow. And I feel like if that isn't a good the condition of the state I want it to be. And then the other areas of my life will be firing on all cylinders. That's not even true. Actually, now that I say that out loud, it's just be, it's t- how I tend to look at it. So, you know, if I gain like, <laughs> like three pounds, I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll say, my wife just laughs at me. I'll be like, yeah, that's it, man. The carbs are out intermittent fasting uh, and only water <laughs> until noon. And then like three days later, I just snap. Right. And fi- like, so I'm, I'm working, I'm working through that process too all the time. So, um, so I think that's a, uh, that's a, that's also a really important lesson for people is that, you know, you want to you want to take yourself out of your comfort zone, but there's not really in order to be sustainable. You don't need to take yourself so dramatically out of your comfort zone or do things that you know over the long term actually damage your health. That doesn't help anybody. Yeah, a hundred percent, man. I, I think we're all guilty of that in some aspect. You know, we we we're really good at helping other people, uh, but at times we we need to be our own biggest coach, right? I mean, we we need to yeah, you know, say, all right, let me let me coach myself <clears throat> on some of these issues that you know, I help other people with. And one of them definitely is like not reverting to extreme measures. I mean, it's simply because, you know, you feel like, oh, well, I'm, I'm a badass. You know, I can fucking do this shit. You know, I, I would never recommend this to my clients, but I'm a, I'm a freak. So I'll just go and, you know, I'm diligent, I'm disciplined and I'll, I'll fast for 72 hours and I'll drink, you know, water and branch chain amino acids only. And like, you're like, wait a second, yeah. that that's never going to work, dude. Like you're going to be on Papa John's speed dial here in a few days. Yeah, absolutely, man. So when you, so you start you know, in 2014, you launch your online fitness business. So maybe we can talk, we'll talk about that in a minute, but how do you, as you start helping people now, you've come out of this, you know, you've learned all these lessons um, and you start helping people with their health and fitness. How did it, how did how you help them? Like, how was that different from when you did it before, you know, as a much younger guy? Yeah, man. I think uh, the big difference now, and it's taken, once again, about a decade of just investing in learning, right? I mean, it's constant learning, constant mentorship from top level coaches and, and, and different uh, resources that, uh, you know, have built or helped build uh, what is now my, my coaching business. But, you know, from comparison to when I first started as a trainer, you know, initially as a trainer, I would just, you know, people would come to me and say, okay, I, I want to lose some weight. And I would just throw them on a program, right? Like, it's all right, cool. You know, let's jump in the gym. I'm going to show you, you know, a few workouts and uh, you'll see me three times a week and you'll do this and that and boom, that's it, right? When in reality, what the most important piece to helping others is really just investing in an investigation of what they're doing right now, right? Like, what are they, what are they doing? And what have they been doing to get to where they are today, right? Because if I look at myself for an example, you know, I woke up 80 pounds overweight, but it didn't happen overnight, right? Mm-hmm. I, I've been digging myself into an emotional eating habit and a stress eating habit, and I needed to address those things. I couldn't just start following a, okay, paleo diet, you know, or okay, it's a keto diet. Like those things work great for some people, but you need to investigate how did you get to where you are now so that you can start to piece together habits and routines that make sense for who you are, right? So, you know, for you, Jason, it could be like, hey, man, you know, I'm trying to get ripped. Awesome. What have you been doing? Well, uh, you know, I've been overeating at night. Okay, no problem. So when are you most hungry? Well, I'm most hungry at night. Okay, it makes sense. That's why you're overeating at night. Are you really hungry early in the day? And you might say, well, to be honest, no, I just think that breakfast, I thought breakfast is the most important meal of the day. So I just, I have, you know, thousand calories for breakfast. Well, that's where we're going to start, right? We're just going to mm-hmm. simply shift some eating habits to your personal preference and where you are today instead of trying to fit you in this box, right? Put you in this like program and diet box or, or behavioral change box that you know everyone's supposed to go through. And in reality, 
everyone's a little different, you know. And so our, our coaching approach these days is really focusing on, you know, a, a person's lifestyle what, and not, not the lifestyle that they want to get to because everybody can talk shit, right, and be like, oh, I want to be like – this full of energy person who's a grinder and hustler and I'm fucking ripped. And you know, that's a great lifestyle to think about, but what are you doing right now? Like what's your life right now? Are you stressed? Are you, are you happy with your relationships? Are you, are you, you know, do you have education? Do you, do you understand food? I mean, do you even know what a calorie is? You know, like, and that's, and everybody's journey is at a different place. So we got to meet them where they are. And then we got to start not necessarily trying to change everything about them, which was what I used to do, right? I used to be like, all right, dude, you know, like <laughs> no carbs or whatever. Like, I mean, whatever dumb shit I was preaching back then. But, <laughs> you know, now it's like, all right, man. Well, you know, it's it's a matter of maybe, hey, you're you're a drive through after work type of guy, right? So I'm going to hit the drive through. You know, that's your routine. You're going to leave work and you go to Taco Bell or whatever it is. We, we may not initially try to change your habit of going to Taco Bell. We might say, hey, man, you know, instead of ordering, you know, six soft tacos and a quesadilla, why don't we just do a quesadilla, right? Like, let's just start there because mm-hmm. it's so much easier to work with your current habits and just build different routines than it is to try to change everything you're doing and be like, dude, you can't go to Taco Bell anymore. I need you to go home. I need you to cook chicken, which you don't know how to make. And I need you to cook some amazing rice that you don't know how to make. And I need you to like eat six meals a day. And like, that's just not, you know, come on. Like, it's not, it's not where they are right now. You need to build to that. Uh, and so that's really the biggest difference in comparison to how we used to start uh, coaching people. And that's just been because of experience, right? I mean, it, learning from other great coaches, of course, number one, I mean, I've spent, man, six figures on investing in other coaches and mentors. Um, you know, I've, I continue to learn today. I mean, Jesus, every day is, you know, we, one of the things we prescribe for myself and then my team is just learn one new thing a day, right? How can we learn one new thing a day that's going to help our clients uh, versus back then where I thought just because I read Arnold's Encyclopedia of Bodybuilding, I knew how to fucking train people, right? I mean, um, that was some great information there, but it wasn't applicable to most people. Yeah, that is that is great advice because we're only capable of making so much change at any given time. So I think that's a really important evolution. And again, that's been a kind of a thing we've talked about a little bit uh, throughout this podcast is that it's all it's incremental. And those patterns, those thought patterns and, and behavioral patterns that you have and that you've been doing for a long time, those are deeply ingrained and they don't change <laughs> overnight. Like it's very, very difficult and challenging to change them. But the way you do it is by making incremental changes changes, you know, having some support, seeing some small results. And, you know, it's really, a, it is a momentum type of thing. So I think that's great advice. Um, one thing, so how do you, how do you coach people around mindset? Because that's obviously, uh, or maybe that maybe a bit different question is how important do you see mindset being in helping people create and sustain change? And then uh, how do you coach them relate as it relates to mindset? Yeah, I love that. So uh, we we have a flagship program, and it's called the True Eight. It's an eight week uh, health, fitness, body transformation course that we run um, every four to six weeks. Uh, and one of the big things when I was creating this program, right? Because I, you know, I looked around and I and I've been doing coaching for a while, and I said I want to create something that really puts mindset at the forefront of health and fitness, right? Because our minds are such a powerful thing, whether it's our subconscious or our conscious. Uh, we have so much in there that dictates what we do and what we don't do and the habits and routines that we have that we really need to focus on our pattern of thinking, right? And we really need to just become more self-aware and self-reflective and be you know, just as fit mentally as we are physically. So um, what we do is that you know, first and foremost, we, we need to just mentally accept that we have uh, a problem that we're trying to solve, right? And, mm-hmm. and, I, and I know people always so, – I mean problem is a negative word. You know, like what's your problem, dude? But in reality, we all have these, these, these fears or these pain points or these, these what I call problems that we need to address. And really it just starts with mentally going, okay, how did I – and it's exp- exploration, right, of how did I get to where I am right now? And just being honest, right, honest about it. You know, and, and most of the time it's a, it's a simple answer, right? It's because, you know, I eat too much and I don't move enough, right? And that's what it kind of breaks down to. But why, right? Why do we eat too much? Why do we move very little? And, it, and a lot of it has to do with the lifestyle, our jobs, our, our, our prior experience, maybe our childhood. Um, and we start to dig into those things so that we mentally can go, okay, I get it, right? I understand 
uh, why I am where I am today. And mentally, that's a huge thing versus most people, right, who go, I just want a solution, right? I don't even give a fuck what the problem is. I just want a solution. Like, mm-hmm. give me give me my drugs, right? <laughs> like, that's yeah. it, right? But like, give, give me, um, you know, the body that I want. And I tell people two things. I learned this from a great mentor of mine. Uh, his name's Jamie. And he said, you know, I could snap my fingers to, you know, if I could snap my fingers right now and give you the body and business that you've always wanted, millions of dollars and an incredible six pack, two things are going to happen, right? Number one, you're not going to be able to keep it because you got no idea uh, around, you know, no idea what the problems are, right? Of why you weren't able to get there in the first place. And so you're not gonna be able to keep it because you still have those problems. Mm-hmm. And then number two, you're not going to appreciate it. And so you're going to lose it because it's not something that you value because you've never worked to get it. Right. And so if we don't address the problems first and foremost, which is a, such a huge deal, like why am I overweight? Why am I stressed? Why am I not getting enough sleep? What's the problem? Then once we know the problem, then we can prescribe it. Just like if I always joke around with people in our eight week program, I say, look, guys, if I was a doctor, right, and I walked in the room and I just looked at you, right, and I just handed you a prescription, didn't even talk about symptoms, didn't talk about what your history was, what your blood pressure looked like, what your medical uh, disease uh, profile looked like. Like I just said, hey, dude, here's all the drugs you need. See you later. You'd be like, what the fuck? Like this guy is a quack, right? Mm -hmm. Like this guy just handed me drugs, has no idea what my issues are. But that's what we do to ourselves with this whole health and fitness thing. We go out and we buy a keto diet kit or a program or some, you know, beach body DVD and sorry to crush beach body and keto, but, um, you know, or, or we Mm -hmm. go buy bulletproof coffee, uh, which is a whole nother thing. And we're just trying to find a solution, but yet we have no clue what we're trying to prescribe and what we're what, what the problem is that we're trying to fix. So that's where yeah. we start, man. I mean, that's that's the biggest piece with with the coaching aspect, and then obviously there's many more mental pieces from there. But that's that's really the beginning. Yeah, I love that, and I, and I think one thing you mentioned that it's really important is that if if you could snap uh, your fingers and give somebody the body they want, they wouldn't keep it. And that is absolutely true because I really believe that we are we benefit so much from adversity and working through it and overcoming it. And, you know, whether it's physical adversity or emotional adversity, there are so many lessons that we learn about ourselves and going through that process. And we emerge from the other side of it stronger. And I think if we looked at it, like instead of looking at adversity, like some sort of thing that's to be avoided at all costs, like I'm too anxious to drive on the highway. Oh, well, we'll give you some anti-anxiety medication. No, fucking like start taking baby steps to start learning how to drive on the highway, right? Like it's, you have to, when you are faced with an obstacle, you have two choices. You can retreat from it or you can find some quick fix or you can grind your way through it. You can work your way through it and learn about yourself in the process. So when you have to do that with your physical health, it's every day, you know, like it's, well, I mean, not literally every day, but you should be doing something every day. And there's going to be days where you don't feel like it. And there's going to be days when it seems hard, but you learn about yourselves in this moment. Why was it hard today? What what did I do yesterday that made it hard today? What is there something in my personal personal relationship with my spouse that made it hard today. Like there's all of these factors and you got to continually unpack this stuff. And when you do that and when you emerge and you overcome this obstacle, whatever it is, man, you value the shit out of that, right? That's just how it works. So I couldn't agree with you more, man. Yeah, no, you're, you're totally spot on. I think, um, this society that we're in, and it's just once again, thing we things we've been kind of brainwashed into, you know, going back to the mental side, mental, mental brainwash of looking for quick fix, right? Looking for a drug or a special program or something that's going to cure us of our issues. And in reality, we got to, you know, attack our issues, right? I mean, it's a matter of instead of like you said running away and going oh man where's the nearest drug or nearest concoction that can you know save me from this thing instead being like all right i'm going to confront this sucker head on you know why the the highway example you mentioned is perfect you know instead of being like man i got to get some anti anxiety medicine it's like all right why am i scared to drive on the highway well it's because when i was 10 my mom you know drove on the highway and got in a car accident right mm-hmm. like okay like that's that's normal that happens uh, but what we need to do is address, you know, the reality of of car accidents. Maybe it's, you know, maybe the statistics show that it's very rare. Maybe it's a matter of, you know, taking a driver's course. Maybe it's a matter of taking a different route, right? Like, why do we always 
jump to the like quick fix that's only yeah it might serve to cause more problems long term yeah for sure one other thing i want to talk about is that you offer and something that we're all a participant in in various different ways but we you know each of us you have communities of people that we you know have founded or facilitated or whatever and uh, I think what happens so often, I mean, I know this happens because it was, I've done this myself. I'm sure you have too. But when we are, we find ourselves in a spot where we don't want to be in, we convince ourselves we're that we're the only person fucked up enough to be in this spot. I'm alone. I've made all these mistakes. I can't ever let anybody find out how much I'm struggling, yada, yada, yada. And then what we do is we isolate ourselves. Or we also have this conditioned belief that, okay, my measure, uh, especially as a man, but as a, say as a human being, I just talked to a lot of guys that think this way, you know, is my ability ability to do things on my own, to overcome this problem on my own, to build a business on my own, to whatever. And, and what we've all seen um, like a million times over is just what bullshit that is and how when you get people together, you know, in a community, it, whether it's a in-person community or an online community around a common interest that can support each other, uh, amazing things can happen. So in your in your community, uh, is it that you're calling it the true transformation army, I think right now, what what have you seen uh, that people have benefited from as being a member of that community? Yeah, I mean, the community is such a big piece and it's and it's a big piece that most people miss out on. They they are afraid to and I totally get it cuz I've been there, right? You're afraid to open the or, or open the curtain, I guess, and reveal you you have issues, right? Or you you're afraid to admit that maybe you don't know it all because you don't want to be looked at like someone who's less than. And so yeah, I mean, community is a big deal. I, it's one of the reasons why uh, CrossFit has been such an epic change. Uh, and I'm not a big believer in CrossFit, but I love the fact that they've, you know, created these communities, right, and these groups of people that all just want to get in better shape, right. And the big thing there is just having a place to feel like, okay, these people are in the same journey as me. They might be further ahead. They might be further behind. It, 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 it all comes down to everybody is trying to get to the same place, right? And so there are other people who are willing to share their struggles and are willing to listen to your struggles uh, and to be there when you might need a hand, right? To, to pick you up or to, to get you out of bed or to say, hey, man, like, you know, did you get your workout done or, you know, how was that workout? Did you like it? Yeah, I loved it, man. It was great. You know, like there's just this whole camaraderie that fuels your, your mental uh, engine, right? So much. Like, I mean, you know, it's not, it, I always compare it to, you know, like, I guess it's, it's like working on a, a, a car, right? I mean, if you're a NASCAR fan, I'm not necessarily a big NASCAR fan, but you know, you got the driver, right. Who's out there on the track and he's, and he's doing the damn thing and he's out there cruising, but he's got to go into the pit, right? And he's got his team of like 20 guys or whatever, you know, fueling him up, you know, making sure his tires are where they need to be checking him, you know, patting him on the back. And then he's got his coach in his ear like, hey, dude, like, you know, make sure you're, you're watching out in the rear view. Make sure you're watching for this lap, you know, on this on this turn or whatever. And there's that community support, which I, it took me a while to learn both in my physical journey and my business journey. I mean, even with my marriage, <clears throat> you know, <clears throat> excuse me. It took me a long time to be like, I can't do this on my own, right? Like I, I, I know certain parts of my life I might think I can do it on my own, but I still need mentors. I still need uh, peers, right, who are in the same journey as me. I still need uh, people I can look to for you know support and help. And you know, like with my business, man, I'm a terrible graphic designer. But for the long time, I tried to do it all on my own, which was fucking <laughs> the worst. Like, don't, if you do one thing in business, don't ever try to do graphic design on your own. Hire some a professional who is an artist who knows what the hell they're doing. Because, man, I, like when I started, when I actually hired someone to do it, you know, oh, my God, like everything changed. That's when, and, and so that's when you realized how bad you actually were. Well, you, that's why I realized. That's when I realized. Well, wait, I, I got an uh, uh, the one C I think I ever got was like an art class, right? Uh, I'm a very creative person, but artistically, yeah. when it comes to drawing and shit, I fucking like my my brain and hand just don't like connect, right? I and hear so, that. Yeah, but it, it's like a team and community is such a big deal in every part of life, and so. You know, we've tried to take and what well, we have, we've, we've created a huge community. We have like almost 2000 people in there now. Uh, but like, you know, in our true eight program in 2017, we'll have helped almost 300 people, but everybody who's gone through that program now shares 
that bond, right? Of like, man, like we were in the true eight, you know, savage group or whatever. We, we name them, right? Different groups. But like they, they have this like support system that they didn't have before. And I do it's just a side note. What I thought was the coolest thing. I, I had a bunch of clients that went through one of my programs and then uh, a couple of them joined like ongoing education that we put out and that kind of stuff. But a couple of them didn't. They were like, all right, you know, we got enough and it was great. But then I, I found out like a group of like five or six of them had formed their own group. Right. And, and they were like, you know, like Josiah's like something. Right. But they would like didn't tell me they just formed it and they were all like supporting each other because they weren't you know paying for programs anymore. And I was like, dude, that's so fucking cool. Um, like amazing. that's just badass. You know what I mean? That's so epic. <laughs> Yeah, that is fantastic. So, well, listen, man, God, I could talk to you forever about this. I know how passionate you are and I see you <laughs> online. And, you know, for one thing I wanted to ask you, so I met some guys from some of the communities that um, that were a member of uh, earlier this week. I met Gene and uh, I don't know if you know Tuan, but I met him too. But regardless, uh, I'm sure I'll meet you in person sometime. And I need to ask you this important question. How fucking tall are you? Because every <laughs> guy I meet, hey, I look like a midget. Hey, I'm just gonna I'm, gonna. I'm gonna be nice about it. I'm taller than you. <laughs> oh, God. I knew it. I knew. <laughs> okay, well, at least well, I'm emotionally. Think of, of giving me your. You get. You gave me your stats earlier in the yeah. show. You said uh, I was. I was. I'm five seven. You know, like whatever. <laughs> And I mentally was like, oh, cool. I'm like a foot taller than you. <laughs> I, I, I said, I said five, nine, just so we're clear. Just <laughs> well, I, okay, well, I'm lying. I'm not a foot taller than you. I'm six one, man. I'm six one. Well, at least I'm emotionally prepared for it now. So, okay. Well, hey, man, this has been a freaking awesome conversation. So before we uh, sign off, can you tell, you want to tell the audience uh, more about what, what you're up to, how you can help them um, and where to find you? Yeah, well, similar to yourself, I, I have a, a, a lot going on, but uh, the easiest places to connect uh, on pretty much every social platform, uh, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, it's just at Josiah Fitness. Uh, so in, you know my name and then fitness. So you can connect with me there, send me a message. I respond to literally every single one. Uh, and so do that. And then I also have my own podcast, the Fit Man Project podcast. Uh, we put out two a week. Uh, and we interview just like you do, man. Awesome people. You've been on the show. I think you were like the third or fourth guest on the show a while. Back. I was, yeah, it was, it was um, great. So you actually, yeah. you actually, yeah, you exactly. actually inspired me. You actually inspired me to start doing oh, a podcast dude. because you were such an amazing interviewer. I was like, oh my God, man, I, I need to be doing this. <laughs> well, you, you, your interviewing skills are amazing, man. So you, you took Thanks, the, brother. the ball and ran with it. So mm. well done. Yeah. I actually, it's funny. I was just thinking about our show because I, one of my uh, team members just uploaded, our uh, podcast onto YouTube uh, because we're trying to get every show on YouTube. And I saw that your show was up there. I was like, oh shit, man, that's awesome. So mm -hmm. yeah, no, it's uh, it's great, man. Things are good. Uh, but the podcast is there. And then we do have a YouTube. It's just youtube.com slash uh, true transform. I think it's the one thing we couldn't get Josiah Fitness for whatever reason. But um, yeah, man, we have, uh, we have a lot going on. If anybody needs any help and we have free stuff, if you just go to my website, the true transformation.com, I think we have like three or four free health and fitness guides that you can download based off your needs. Uh, absolutely free and just start getting uh, some help right away. Uh, we do a new year program that we're launching here in a couple of weeks. I'm not sure when this podcast will be uh, out, but it does kick off, I believe, January 8th. So if you're listening and you're interested, you know, just we're more than happy mm -hmm. to give free help. It's not necessarily not everybody wants to pay for it. So we totally understand that. Um, but yeah, man, that's that's it. We got a lot going on, a lot of a lot of content. If you need it, it's all it's all there for you. Awesome, brother. Well, you know, before I sign off, I just want to tell the audience that Josiah is the real deal, man. Like of of the people that I know and I see working in this health and fitness space, this guy is at the top of his game. I remember posting something, I think on your your Facebook wall or one of your groups the other day, but uh, or a couple months ago. But I remember saying that you are literally like every day you remind me of how what an incredibly high level coach you are. And uh, I just can't thank you enough for the value that you are bringing to the world. And uh, you inspired the hell out of me, man. So I just wanted to say thanks for being on the show. And uh, I will continue to be your friend and support you in any way that I can, man. You're doing important, important work. And uh, it's just been awesome to talk to you and to hear your story. Dude, thank you so much, man. That's, I mean, all I can say is that's humbling and I'm filled with gratitude. My face is turning red over here. You can't see it. Uh, but uh, we'll meet in person and you can, uh, you can embarrass me and, and uh, we'll, you know, you'll, you'll be able to, uh, you know, stand next to me and, and we'll, we'll do a photo so that we can get our heights 
really outlined and all that good yeah. stuff. So now you're doing <laughs> incredible work too. You know what, man? Before we go, I, I will say one thing and then we can sign off. But, you know, the the moment where I realized, I mean, I knew you were an awesome guy and I, I knew your story was incredible. Uh, and I'm sure your listeners are, are fully engaged in your tribe and they love it. But, you know, the one tribe member that you have that you may not realize, man, this person is incredibly important uh, to myself and to everybody in my life. Um, but they're a huge, huge fan of yours. So my mom is really a huge fan of yours. Yes. Wow. Was, that's uh, amazing. Uh, a couple, a couple months back, she was like, yeah, you know, you had a guest on your show. His name was Jason McKenzie. And, um, he's got this other company that he, that he has. She was just telling me all this stuff. And I go, hey, yeah, yeah, you really, you know, you, you listen to his stuff. She's like, oh, he's my favorite show. I was like, wow, awesome. that's awesome, man. So you're kicking ass because you got my mom as a groupie, dude. <laughs> well, you know what? Then I think we better end it there because it can only go downhill from here. So thanks for being on the show, 100%. brother. And uh, okay, buddy, take care, man. <laughs> hey, yeah, you too, buddy. Talk to you soon. Hey, cool interview, wasn't it? So I think the story shows you, right, that no matter where you've been, it's not a place you have to stay. Josiah was 280 pounds. He was feeling or having suicidal thoughts, but you know what? He climbed out of that hole. And I think the, one of the most important messages is that that climbing process took years. And I think in some ways it goes on forever, right? We are always climbing, whether it's out of a hole or up a mountain, it doesn't matter. We are constantly moving inch by inch and it takes a long time and that's okay. That's not something to run from. That is something to embrace, right? Because we have all kinds of time to continually figure ourselves out and, and learn how to perform at a higher level and think differently and become more self-aware. So some people see that as a curse, but I see it as a blessing, and I know Josiah does too. So thanks, brother, for being on the show. I loved our conversation, man. And uh, keep doing what you're doing. You know, you know I'll support you in any way I can. And I'll end this show like I end every single show, and that's by saying, listen, if you're struggling, I want you to know that I have struggled too. And if you ever, ever want to talk to me, I will not judge you. Okay, so please consider, especially around this holiday season, it's the holiday season of 2017, please consider giving somebody else the gift of human connection. Yeah, sure, you can give them a fucking sweater too, but consider giving them the gift of human connection and you can literally create it with those simple, simple words. I've struggled too. I will not judge you. Until next time, everybody.